Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. A South Central Kentucky town is filling up with hundreds of people saying goodbye to a fallen firefighter. A new scam targets small businesses. How you can avoid becoming a victim coming up. Another great looking day. It felt like a broken record. It just keeps spinning and spinning. But hey, nobody's complaining about this weather. But toward the weekend, get a nice little bump in the road. Now I'll explain that coming up. WKYT News and News starts right now. And good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Friends, family, and first responders from around the country have gathered in southern Kentucky to say goodbye to a fallen firefighter. The funeral for Captain Tony Greider has just started in Columbia. The Campbellsville firefighter died last Saturday, one month after being injured in an accident during an ice bucket challenge. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is live in Dare County now with more on how he's being honored. It's our top story at noon. Phil? To say that this town's focus is on Captain Tony Greider would be an understatement. There are streets blocked off everywhere. Traffic is being diverted. Every around every corner you see, there are American flags, and hundreds of people are filing into the Columbia Christian Church. We were there this morning as dozens of firefighters escorted the fire truck carrying the casket from the Columbia Adair County Fire Department to the church. More than 100 pieces of firefighting apparatus have been lining up all morning and hundreds are filing into the church for the services. While the services are taking place, the local fire department here is being manned by the Jamestown Fire Department. We spend a lot of time together, not only the paid departments, but the volunteers. We spend a lot of time with each other, each other's families, and so you becomes very close. And when a tragedy like this happens, uh, it doesn't matter what department, paid or volunteer, and where you're from, it'll affect you. Now, following the service, there will be a lengthy processional through town. And again, more than 100 firefighting vehicles will be part of that. It'll go through town. There will be a burial service then in Russell County. In Adair County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Phil, thank you very much. And in a very courteous move while the services are underway, the Campbellsville Fire Department is being manned by the Greensburg Fire Department. Several Central Kentucky businesses are coming together tonight to help a Guam National Guard member who was seriously hurt in a DUI crash last week. Lexington police say former firefighter Jared McCargo hit Noel Espino outside the beer trap in the Chevy Chase neighborhood last Friday. Espino remains in critical condition. WKYT's Victor Puente has more on how you can get involved in tonight's fundraiser. Victor. Captain Noel Espino was in Kentucky for training when that crash happened. Since then, the Guam National Guardsman has been at UK Hospital, and Kentucky's National Guard has been supporting him. Espino was part of a group of Guam Army National Guard members who were taking part in training at Bluegrass Station. A guard spokesperson tells me that training had finished. Friday night, Espino was one of several people outside of the beer trap in Lexington when a hit and run driver backed into the building, injuring Espino. He was taken to UK Hospital where he's still in critical condition, although a National Guard chaplain says he is improving. That chaplain is part of a group of Guard members who've been working to help Espino, his unit, and his wife who got into Lexington on Sunday. That chaplain says the Guard is trying to make sure Espino and his wife can focus on his recovery while they're so far from home. It really gives the peace of mind that family members to know that uh, they're not alone. Uh, and that if we had a Kentucky soldier in Guam who fell to some uh, accident uh, during a training session that we would want them to do the same thing and we have no doubt that they would. The man Lexington police say hit Espino, Jared McCargo, has been charged with assault, DUI, leaving the scene of an accident and driving without insurance. At the time of the crash, he was a Lexington firefighter, but the city fired him on Monday. In Frankfurt, Victor Puente, WKYT. The Beer Trap will be holding a fundraiser for Espino today. One dollar of each draft sold will be given to him. An international scam is targeting Lexington businesses. The Better Business Bureau says scammers posing as reps from the Yellow Pages are sending invoices to companies for advertising that they never placed. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel tells you what to look for to keep yourself from becoming a victim. It's here in this Crime Tracker report. 
The Better Business Bureau is warning small business owners about a scam that's once again making its rounds. This is a copy of the fax that was sent to WKYT. It states that in order to be included in a new online directory for Kentucky Yellow Pages, the employer must provide the business's website, email, and name, along with a signature before a specific deadline in order to be included in next month's edition. In large print, the form states that it's not a bill, but in fine print, it shows that by signing and returning this form, the business would be agreeing to pay $1,188 for two years. The publisher, Open Business Directory, is based out of Boston, Massachusetts. They received an F on the BBB rating system along with hundreds of complaints. Officials say directory listing is a common scam that targets businesses. The issue with these types of yellow pages solicitations is, first of all, they'll use the logo of the walking fingers, that familiar logo everyone has seen for years associated with Yellow Pages directories. This logo is not copyrighted, therefore any company can use it. And that's where the confusion lies. BBB officials say if an out-of-state company is claiming to be with the local Yellow Pages, that's a red flag right there. But even if it is an in-state address, you should still do some research and make sure it is the correct Yellow Page company that you want. In Lexington, Whitney Watzel, WKYT. And the Federal Trade Commission's website says directory listings are one of the five most common ways that scammers target businesses. State arson investigators looking into a fire that destroyed an old central Kentucky gas station. By the time firefighters could get there, the old Leach Market building on U.S. 27 in Lincoln County was fully engulfed in flames. Firefighters tell the Interior Journal that there have been at least five illegal burns around that building in the last three months. The owner of the property Property says he was in the process of tearing the building down. Well, it may sound a little like a broken record, but it's another beautiful fall day here in the bluegrass. We're seeing sunny skies and warmer temperatures this midday, and things are expected to stay relatively the same through the weekend. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now with an early look at the forecast. The broken record forecast is okay when you're talking about sunshine and really nice temperatures. It's all right. I don't think anybody's worried about that. It, it becomes nasty and not really exciting to hear about when you're talking about storms and everything like that. So good weather. Yeah, we, it looks like we're just saying it all over again, but you know what? We'll take it 68 degrees in Richmond, 70 now in Frankfurt. We head toward the rest of the afternoon. Mid 70s expected for everybody. We go in toward the evening and still really nice evening. Actually, would be quite mild once that sun sets. It only cools off once you hit that midnight hour and beyond. 49 degrees again tomorrow morning, and then we warm back up to the mid, maybe even some upper 70s here and there once it's all said and done tomorrow. We'll close in on 80 degrees toward the weekend, and then we got a little bump in the road, and I'll explain that coming up in a few minutes. All right, Micah, thank you, and we will see you with that full forecast coming up uh, very shortly here. And we want to tell you about this. You know, you've seen so many ads on TV this fall about the uh, political campaigns, but most of those have been in those federal races. There is a new survey that says Kentucky ranks next to last in the amount of TV ad spending for state elections. We surprised some people. The nonpartisan Center for Public Integrity estimates candidates for Kentucky State House and Senate races have spent just $4,600 on TV ads so far this cycle. The money does not include spending on radio, online, direct mail, or television ads on local cable systems. Now, you will see some ads. State leaders say candidates have nearly $300,000 worth of ads that are reserved for the coming weeks. So, still to come. Yeah, and that's going on with that big battle for the state house underway. Well, Kroger is partnering with a California wine marketer for a line of ready to drink, single serve wine beverages. The Herald Leader reports that the flavors include a sangria like red wine. A Sonoma brew, which is a blend of red wine and cola, a white wine spritzer, and an adult take on cream soda with Chardonnay and vanilla. The canned wine will be sold exclusively at Kroger stores nationwide. It will be launched next spring.
All right, lots of options coming. Well, President Obama is trying to strengthen a U.S. coalition against ISIS at the U.N. General Assembly. We'll have the latest on the ongoing effort next on Kentucky's number one midday news. And also ahead on WKYT, legendary rocker Bob Dylan set to be recognized for his music and his philanthropic achievements. We'll have more on a prestigious honor for him coming up on WKYT News at noon. Welcome back to WKYT News at noon. President Obama addressed the General Assembly at the United Nations today. It comes as the U.S.-led coalition forces conducted new airstrikes over Syria on the militant Islamic group ISIS. Jerika Duncan at the U.N. in New York now with the very latest. The president took center stage at the U.N. General Assembly. He addressed the annual gathering of more than 140 global leaders. His focus? The American-led airstrikes in Syria. The terrorist group known as ISIL must be degraded and ultimately destroyed. The airstrikes over Syria continued for a second day with attack, bomber, and fighter aircraft barrages against ISIS. Collectively, we must take concrete steps to address the danger posed by religiously motivated fanatics and the trends that fuel their recruitment. The Pentagon reports five airstrikes in two days, including ISIS staging areas in Abu Kamal on the eastern border with Iraq. The only language understood by killers like this is the language of force. So the United States of America will work with a broad coalition to dismantle this network of death. In addition, the president urged Iranian leaders to pursue peace without nuclear weapons, and he called on world leaders to reduce carbon emissions to help fight global warming. That's how we can protect this planet for our children and our grandchildren. Mr. Obama also addressed the Ebola health crisis and the unrest in the Ukraine. Jerika Duncan, CBS News, New York. So much Heads of state gathering at the U.N. this week have described the multiple security and health crises facing the global body as unprecedented. The vicious enterovirus is spreading across the U.S. Health officials say it's been confirmed now in 30 states. They believe the opening of more schools may be responsible for the recent increase in cases. Children with enterovirus also often display cold-like symptoms, but the virus can swell their air passages, making it difficult and painful to breathe. The virus progresses rapidly with children going from healthy to severely ill in just a day. Kentucky has had at least five confirmed cases of enterovirus. Well, actor Leonardo DiCaprio says the time for action on climate change is now. DiCaprio drove home this message as he addressed world leaders at the U.S. in Climate Control Summit going on in New York. He is the U.N. Messenger of Peace and was asked to speak by the Secretary General. DiCaprio says climate change is the single greatest threat to mankind. He also called on industries and governments around the world to take decisive action by cutting carbon pollution in their countries. The new Miss America is confirming that she was ousted from her Hofstra University sorority for hazing. Kira Kazantev says that she herself was hazed by the Sisters of Alpha Phi and that she was brought up through the organization thinking that was appropriate behavior. A report claims pledges were called names, criticized over their appearance, and made to perform physically difficult tasks to the point of exhaustion. She's from New York and denies that the hazing went that far. Okay. All right. The Grammys are set to honor the legendary Bob Dylan, and musicians are lining up for the chance to pay tribute to him. The Recording Academy has named Dylan its Music Cares Person of the Year for his artistic and philanthropic Anthropic achievements. Performers at the Benefit concert will include Neil Young, John Mellencamp, the Black Keys, Willie Nelson, Eddie Vedder, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash. The event will be held February 6th, two days before the Grammy Awards. All right, some big names taking part in that. Well, the debate continues over the controversial issue of arming local police departments with high grade weapons. We'll have reaction from the militarization hearing in Frankfurt coming up on WKYT News at 12. 30. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris and First Alert Defender.
Looking outside at the moment, we don't even need first alert defender. And actually, we haven't needed first alert defender in about four to five days because there just hasn't even been a cloud in the sky to give us some rain. So all is well there as you look across the state of Kentucky. 69 degrees in Covington. We're at 70 degrees in Frankfurt. Some of us over toward the west dealing with the 70s already. And we're starting to see that warmer air kind of move on into the region. It's not warm, but it's warmer. A mild day in store, we'll call it. Mid 70s across the bluegrass region, down toward the southern zones. Same story, different locations. Somerset, Russell Springs will be our warm spots for today. 76 there in Hazard, Jackson, West Liberty. Jackson, we finished off in the upper 40s to the lower 50s this morning. And then you look toward the north. There you are, 77 in Mason County. And then you work your way toward Lewis, Greenup, Ashland coming in. Boyd County at about 75 degrees this afternoon. And your weekend planner, look, from today and tomorrow, Tomorrow, things look really good. Heading even toward Friday, things look great. Saturday, that does not change. 80 degrees, several festivals going on. West Liberty, uh, go down south into the London area. Big festival, real chicken festival going on there on Saturday. And any events you have happening, one in Lawrenceburg, yeah, you're good to go there at 80 degrees. It'll be warmer. But it's going to be dry. Only a small chance there on Sunday at about 78 degrees. And when I say small chance, I'm talking about 30% max out of this. So things are looking really good the next four to five days. No change in the forecast throughout Friday. It is getting warmer, 79 on Friday. UK game in Vandy. Hey, things look good. Even toward um, uh, kickoff, we'll be right there around 75 degrees. It's not too bad, and I don't even think you need a coat that Saturday evening, so all is well until we hit next week. Next week when we, when we start to bring some rain in here. You guys don't even know what rain is, do you? <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a minute. <laughs> Absolutely. I vaguely remember. <laughs> yeah. I do. Exactly. Yeah. All right. That sunshine's easy to enjoy. Oh, it's nice. All right. <laughs> Thank We're you. We're coming back on WKYT News. A former cat has found a great new home right here in central Kentucky. And will the struggling Commodores be shorthanded when they come to town Saturday? Dave Baker's next with sports. And checking stocks as we head to break. All the major market indicators up quite a bit at midday. Vanderbilt is struggling as the Commodores come into Commonwealth Stadium on Saturday, and that struggle could be even bigger because of their quarterback situation. Mason Robinette is questionable after suffering a concussion in the loss to Vanderbilt. They're supposed to have a final word on him later today. If he can't go, freshman Wade Freeback will get his second career start. Cats, they're a young team. Bandy, even younger. The Commodores have dropped three of their first four under new coach Derek Mason, who came in from the West Coast with that Stanford style offense. You know, Coach, Coach Mason's just getting started, and uh, you see the new wrinkles week to week. Uh, you never know what that's going to be, uh, but they're building uh, more and more. Um, and and uh, this week, uh, it'll be the difference will be you don't see as many big sets, like I just said, with extra tackles in the game, extra tight ends, um, and they're very creative uh, with what they do uh, in their big personnel. Sometimes a change of scenery is good for a player, and boy, are the folks at EKU glad Dyshawn Mobley came to Richmond. EKU's 4-0 on the season, but most importantly, 1-0 in conference play after a win at UT, on, uh, UT Martin on Saturday. One of the biggest reasons, the play of the transfer running back. The former Wildcat leads EKU in rushing and has shown the ability to break big runs. He's the OVC newcomer for the second week in a row. You know, I just got to give a big hands up to my, uh, my offensive linemen. They helped me get these awards, so they, they get as much award I get. They, they need it, too. they just been um, making big holes for me, and I've just been hitting them full speed. And, and so, there we go. He wants to run for them because they're working so hard for him, and uh, they want to block you know, for him because they know they don't have to be perfect. It takes a little bit of heat off of them. He can make somebody miss, and you know now he's proven a couple different games that he can go the distance. Boy, he's had a big year and a record crowd of 3,368. Turn it out to see the soccer matchup between Kentucky and Louisville after a scoreless first half. Ricardo Velasco gave U of L the lead in the 64th minute. Kentucky answers in the 72nd minute. First goal of the year from Brian Sellis. That tied it at one all, but Tim Cabell came through with the game winner for the Ville, and the Cards win it two to one. Great atmosphere, though, last night. Over the Bell Soccer Complex tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel. UK offensive lineman Max Godme. Yes, he's uh, one of the newest members of the National Good Works team for his work with the homeless and SEC columnist Russ Mitchell of College Football News. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP, the very latest on that Vanderbilt quarterback situation. When we come back, beginning at 4, but just ahead, Barb and Bill back with more WKYT News at noon. In a minute.